Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys how we can use layer masks in order to hide part of a sprite that may be in an animation using Unity. So the basic concept is this. We might have something like a trap, like over here in Mario Brothers, where a giant pillar comes down and strikes the ground. So while it's in its idle state, most of this spike is actually hiding above the ground up here and then it will come down and hit the ground. So at various points of this animation, parts of the spike are going to be hidden and parts are not. Now it might be possible in many cases to just hide the sprite by having another sprite in front of it, such as this background wall that we see up here. But what if you don't have that? So you can actually hide sprites inside of Unity by using layer masks, which is a built-in tool for your game objects. So here I have a pillar trap to give the very rudimentary art here and this pillar is going to have two different states so it's going to have an activated state where it comes up here and would theoretically hit or damage a character and then it has its idle state where it will return to once it's triggered and drop back down here to the bottom but then you'll see here I have a layer mask here which will actually hide the sprite as it comes down here so in order to do the animation we simply adjust the position of the sprite basically moving it up and down and when it is down although we don't have anything covering it here like background it's going to be hidden in the game because we have a layer mask hiding everything below here so i can show this really quickly by adjusting the position of the pillar so i'll bring this down and by dropping it down to zero or around there uh, we can see that Although the sprite size is the same, the layer mask is hiding everything that drops below this point right here. So to show what this might look like in an animation, I can show you the idle state. So this idle state is what would be shown until the pillar is triggered. So this would be where everything is hiding over here below the layer mask. And then when you actually have the animation trigger, it will start at that idle state and it will play back going to its highest point and then sink back down. These curves are of course optional uh, out of the box it gives you a simple one so when you have a basic animation here over one second it looks kind of like that. Okay so in the actual game object itself I have pillar trap base this is where you would want to control the position of the trap in general as you can see um, although the sprites are split into two different parts this base area right here everything you see in red so then on the pillar game object, which is a child of the parent, uh, obviously in the animation you can change the position of it however you want. And by splitting your sprite into two, it becomes very easy to manipulate them individually, which can be helpful. Now to actually add your mask, I have a separate game object also attached to the parent pillar trap base here. And you can see it's just a basic game object that has a sprite mask attached to it. So for the sprite, I'm using a simple white square. It's 100 by 100 pixels. And then however much I scale up this simple sprite to is going to determine the bounds of this layer mask. So pretty much that's all you really need. I don't think I needed to even change the alpha cutoff point at all. And then once you have your trap animating properly, you can simply attach a box collider for where you want it to do damage. Um, use an animator in order to actually move the sprite. And I created a little pillar activation script. So when W is pressed, the animation gets triggered. So we can hit play and see how that would look like. So you may decide that it's not the player who's actually controlling the pillar at all. So I'm going to hit W here and the animation triggers right after that. Note here the important thing that is when the pillar is actually down here under the base, that it is completely invisible and to prove that it is there i will disable the mask temporarily and you can see how it looks without having the mask there so if it was like this that would not be the result we want and that's why the layer mask is very useful in this case so i'm going to include a link to this project in the description you're free to use it however you wish i've been chris thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in my future video content